Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dark Cloud. I'm Pwnshop135, and in the last episode, we saw the threat we're facing, had a whole bunch of cutscenes and talking, explored our dungeon, and basically got a general sense of the world. In this episode, we're going to continue on with our adventure, starting by talking to the mayor. Every time you leave the dungeon, you want to do this. Alright, so, go to the mayor's house, talk to him. Now our only hope is Dran. Dran has always watched over us. I'm sure Dran has watched us this time too, and will help us. But really, this time even Dran's windmill, where Dran's magical power dwells, is destroyed. Now okay, talk to him again. This looks to be no easy task. I put some items you'll be needing in your back. Be careful, okay? Every time you talk to the mayor, he will always put one water, one bread, one antidote drink, one escape powder, and one repair powder. So, that's why I said don't worry about burning your items. I made sure to hang on to both my waters because you're only going to get one water and he's not going to um, give you more than one. So, Alright, so now, we have a, since we got a little bit of Atomelia, and if you're wondering about the, the music, don't worry about it, the music goes away at late dusk, and not, uh, from late dusk to early dawn, so, and it's this nice kind of thing is when the sun is setting and rising, the music will fade in and fade out, which is a nice touch. Anyway, since we're here, we're going to go ahead and mess with the Giorama. You press select to, to enter or exit Giorama mode. Press triangle to bring up the menu. You have config assembly, move and remove, Giorama analysis, save, options, and manual. So we're going to go into config assembly. We're going to arrange Macho's house. Uh, we're just going to put him right here for now. Nighttime. All right. When you place a new a uh, new play, when you place a building, you always want to check because they have these tiny little treasure chests. This one gave us bread, tasty water. We're going to go inside. And I apologize in advance for how bright or how dark the game looks. Um, I am running this on a PlayStation 2 with an HDMI converter into my uh, capture card. So I've tried to futz with the settings and I think I've got it dead on for now. Uh, anyway, um, fun fact, when you do first person mode inside of a house, you can actually move around. Pretty neat. Anyway, uh, there's nothing here in Macho's house. Alright. Um, with move and remove, you can either move a location or you can get rid of it altogether. Giorama ROM analysis, its complete uh, collection is how much, you know, you've obtained. Complete is how many buildings you've put together. And requests, well, we'll go over that in a little bit. For now, we're going to, um, we're not going to worry about the trees, the river, or the road, because those are, you know, landmarks. So those don't really have any anything specific uh, but if you look at Macho's house as you can see we got all these bits and bobs over here we have um, all these slots which will give us hints about where to put things or what to put on, put in there for now the only two slots we have available are two character slots daily training makes for a muscular body a little powerhouse and these rounded ones are usually characters. So take Macho. Macho. 
He likes his name. Never skips training. So we're going to put him here. Now we have Macho. So we just need to go inside and talk to him. Alright. Ah, uh, Toin! I missed you, man. Your smile really brightens my day. Alright. Now we talk to him and we bring up this menu. Hello, which is just, you know, friendly chatter. How should I build Naroon? Fighting is what a man should live for. It's a basic fact, right? So basically, that's where they want their house, uh, where they want their house done, uh, put. Um, what will happen when it's done? Hmm, that you should ask my big brother. Oh, yeah. Dig it. And that that's basically um, try and incentivize you. And then tell me how to rebuild your house. Look, don't forget to expand my room and the barbell put down outside. So basically that um, fills in the question marks or opens up the question marks, I should say. Because if we go back to Georama mode and config assembly, we have uh, your own room and needed for training. We're just going to leave that alone. Uh, now, manuals, which we got at the end of the episode. Basically, it's a quick rundown of, you know, everything that the old man talked about. Even stuff he hasn't talked about yet. Now, um... I will go ahead and say this. Inventory space is very vital in this game. As you can see, we've got 11 out of 50 by that number on the top, top right. That is how much space we have in our uh, pouch. And the manual eats up room. It's, it's a pain, but it's a quality of life update they fix in the sequel. So, without further ado, let's go back into the dungeon. Right. Now, taking a look at this uh, screen, you can see B1, B2, that's basement 1, basement 2. Those circles are Atmelia, or Atla, sorry, or Atla. When it's open like that on B1, it means we've got them all. On B2, it means we haven't got any. And then there's a counter, you know, AI8, 0A, whatever. Then there's a monsters beaten which we beat 15 monsters in B1. So let's go ahead and charge into B2. Yeah. Oh, it's a kitty. Go on. Now, with uh, the dungeon floors, they are randomly generated. Uh, the only thing that doesn't, uh, that isn't random about them, is the uh, dark crystal or the the map. You always get those in a dungeon, or in a dungeon floor. All right. Go got more bread. Okay. So now, alright, perfect, this is time for me to talk about weapons. So you can see we have our dagger. Each weapon has the stat of attack, endurance, speed, magic, whip, and ABS. Now from the customize menu, uh, whip is how much um, is weapon hit points. Once it hits zero, the weapon will break. The dagger won't. But if you've done any upgrades to it, leveled it up, etc., you'll lose that. Um, ABS is basically the experience. It's absorption. Max power absorbed allows upgrade. Attack, you know, basic weapon attack powers. You can see it's seven. It's puny, but it's effective. Endurance. The higher this is, the less whip you lose. Speed.
speed is how quick you can swing your weapon for the next attack. You know, the higher it goes, the more you're able to pull off a combo. And magic is um, weapons magic power and magic attribute up. Basically, it will put strength into elements and busters. Next is um, the elemental screen. Basically, um, fire, ice, thunder, wind, holy. Uh, fire can beat enemies weak to flame. Ice can beat enemies weak to cold. Thunder for weak against electricity. Wind for enemies weak against wind. And holy for dark and undead enemies. You can only activate an element if you have that element infused with at least you know one point. The higher the elemental value, the higher the damage you do. And then finally there's busters. And basically it's the higher the number, the more proficient you are with that enemy. Got anti-dragon, anti-undead, anti-marine, anti-rock, anti-plant, anti-beast, sky, metal, mimic, and mage. And these are all determined by their busters. As you can see we have undead buster, put that on there, gives us three towards undead. We're going to keep that since we're pretty much dealing with um, skeleton soldiers. And with this wind crystal, gives us three wind. But we're not going to need that right now because elements really don't matter. Uh, from the screen you can also repair it. And that's the extent of it for now. Um, allies, we're not able to mess with this so wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, Georama parts. We can futz with Georama parts while we're in dungeons. So that's that's neat. Anyway, we're just going to progress. Uh, supplies. Another pack of repair powder, so we'll be able to, best case scenario, we'll be able to go into the dungeon long. Maybe go into another floor. As you can see, we got Kamacho, which I'm not going to worry about messing with the Giorama until we get um, outside. Now, um, the dashers that we encountered last episode are weak towards beast, the bats are weak towards sky, and skeleton soldiers are weak towards um, undead and hold. Yamage here is, um, I think, weak to undead, either undead or mage, but they're also weak to holy. Not much of an enemy. Oh, we got Drain's Quest. Drain's Quest. Not much of an enemy to deal with. He's pretty easy to take care of. Um, bats are also weak to Thunder. I don't think Dashers are weak towards any element. and we're going to take out that damage. There we go. Now, uh, this circle in the middle, it's basically a huge risk. Like, it'll either get a good effect or a bad effect. So, we're going to go ahead and trip it. Pumped with energy, which basically gives us the stamina um, status. What that does is makes our attacks stronger, but for a limited time. And I'm just going to wind up burning it and collecting all this stuff. Barbell. Stand-in powder, which we're not going to be able to use for a good long while. 
Let's go ahead and recover. Recover our water. Yeah, see, it, it's gone. But we would have done a pretty decent amount of damage. But it's not... It's not too useful because these enemies are pretty weak. I say as a bat nearly did me in last episode. That's because bats are jerks. Alright. Now, we can upgrade it and whatever you have attached to your weapon when you upgrade it uh, will be fed into it. But I don't want to feed the buster. So, we'll just go ahead and take it off. Uh, wait until you level up your your weapon before you repair it. Because the whip will change and you'll be, you know... You won't be at uh, full capacity. So, as you can see, we got 7, 31, 71, and 3. We'll upgrade it. And it bumps all of the basic stats up by one. As you can see, um, ABS went up by one and whip went up by one as well. Uh, of course, I could be wrong. I think ABS went up by a, a bit more, but still. Oops. You always want to make sure that you upgrade your weapons before you face any more enemies because you don't want to lose that experience. Damage. Annex running. Oh, that reminds me. Put the buster back on. Now the um, attachments will become important, or yeah, important later on when we have a, another weapon besides the dagger. But as you can see on the bottom left screen is that speed meter with our dagger present. Basically, um, we have to give that meter a chance to replenish before we're able to bust out another combo. As you can see, it's empty. Can't really do too much. him down so uh, let's see how we're looking items wise yeah we're still doing pretty good we can at least um, tackle another floor All right so since it's quite a hike I'm gonna go ahead and cut till we get to the door We're back. All right. Transcrest, and we're gonna go down here to the next floor. I'm back. Exciting, eh? Don't give me that look. This is for your benefit. Now. Here is the intermediate course. I won't re repeat myself, so listen carefully. First is the lock-on. You already knew that. Uh, you already knew that pressing the circle button locks on the monsters. Red target frame will appear around the enemy for as long as they are locked on. However, you may not have known that L and R buttons function change during lock-on. Pressing the L1 during lock-on switches the lock-on to another enemy. Pressing the L1 repeatedly cycles through all the enemies in your point of view. We already know this. Pressing R1 activates your guard. Guarding allows you to defend against enemy attacks. Don't forget the guard function. It can save you in the heat of battle. Also, did you know about the 
attribute change function for your weapons. This changes weapons elemental attributes. There are five attributes. Fire, Ice, Thunder, Wind, and Holy. Many monsters are vulnerable to a specific attribute. Change a weapon's attribute, use the attribute or customize command in that weapon's menu and change it there. Of course, you cannot activate an attribute unless that weapon has points for that attribute. What do you think? Easy, huh? Don't want to fry your noodles, so that's enough for this time. Good luck, boy. See you soon. Yeah, that's kind of the part that sucks about this early game, is you have to listen to the old man's explanations. Even if you've played this game several times. Come on. Alright, as you can see, we're now strong enough to one-shot one shot bot at bats. Dark Crystal. Standing powder again can't use that yet. In, in this er, in these early dungeon floors, you'll get a lot of items that you can't use yet, like standing powder or uh, or prickly. Here we have a statue, which is pretty difficult enemy. He's got uh, he's a stone type, so he's got pretty high defense. Which, as you can see, ouch. One swipe, we've already lost three, um, three whip. So we're going to have a doozy of a time taking him out. But he did, does give a pretty fat amount of, um, experience. As you can see, we also got the endurance attachment. Endurance plus three makes it harder to break a weapon. So we're going to put that on there. Here we have a stamina drink, which we drink that, and it will give us uh, the stamina um, status. Oh, crap. We also have a statue dog. Alright, um... I'm gonna go ahead and pop that drink. Statue dog! Oh. He's a pretty annoying enemy to deal with. Um, basically, he's a transformer. He'll transform, and he'll uh, attack you until you uh, back off, then he'll re-transform. You don't get a whole lot of um, opportunity to get a good couple of licks in, but it, it's more of a hit-and-run tactic. Right here we have a big chest, which most of the time will have a new weapon. Now we got ourselves the Gladius. Light, lightweight, double-edged sword, fairly high attack power. Attack 10, endurance 32, speed 60, magic 6. Basically a... Well, somewhat far cry from our dagger. But if we take a look at it, um, it automatically has holy, which means it's great against dark and undead. And it is a bona fide um, undead killer. Given that this is a new weapon, we can choose to build it up and have it evolve. And there are two weapons we can evolve it into. And when you check out the conditions for evolution, you can. Um, what's in red is basically what needs to be worked on. So, all four basic stats, Ice, Thunder, Wind, and then C. For number two, it's Attack, Endurance, Magic, Thunder, Beast, Undead, Mage. <coughs> oh, 
Oh. Mm. Oof. Oh, that was horrible. A bit of acid reflux there. Ugh. All right, now, while we can swap to the Gladius and use it, I want to keep using the dagger. And you'll see why later. For now... <coughs> Oof. Oh, great. Now I got that stomach acid taste in my mouth. Now. And some of it went up my nose a bit. Ugh. Like it's right on the edge of that nasal cavity where it feeds into the mouth. Ugh. Alright. Now to deal with this skeleton soldier that's been chasing us. Alright. Um, what are the odds? This is the bone key. Oh, dang, I wish it was. Alright, as you can see, we got mining. Once again, an item we can't use. We got Skeleton Soldier, get more Gilda. Which right now, Gilda is fairly useless to us. But it won't be for long. Alright. Now. Oh, there's the Bunky. Let's take on that statue. Right. Now, the item, the other item, uh, the other chest items, I should say, that you get are completely random. So sometimes you'll get a very good, you know, uh, randomization, or you get a very bad randomization. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use the active item feature. What you do here is you set an item up here to use on the field without having to access um, the menu. We're going to take those bomb nuts, put them up here. Now, some of the items in the active slot are automatic. Well, actually, I think it's just one item is automatic, but other than that, you have to actively use them. So. We're going to put Bomb Nuts, and Bomb Nuts are a throwable item. So basically we're going to, with the highlighter on the pouch in the top center, we'll press square. And it's a bomb. The only downside is, if you use held items like that to kill an enemy, you get none of the experience. you can use the d-pad to switch between your pouches. So now we're going to use the bone key. Right. Statue dog. Bone soldier, come on. I don't want to trigger that statue dog right yet. Alright. Yeah, once he goes in defense mode, he'll chop a significant portion of your whip. Alright. Alright. Oh, we got a cave bat and a statue and something else. Wire bat's the most annoying dungeon in these. Alright. We're going to... Actually, I want... You know, I'll, I'll, I'll want to keep those. I want to keep those. We're good. And bingo. Alright. Now, before I take you on... I want to get you the items. Get a bench. And a road. Now, one last thing I want to show off is when you're locked onto an enemy, press X 
and once Toen starts flashing, you can do a charge attack. It does pretty, pretty good damage, but it eats up um, two points of whip to attempt. And that's not accounting for when you come down and hit an enemy. So with that statue, I was burning five whip every time I hit it. Or two, uh, two if I whiffed on it. Um, okay, I want to keep my waters and bread right where they're at. So I'm going to hit up the pond and I'll see you guys at the door. Here we are. going to use the transcrest. And we're going to leave. morning. I was about to say it's just about morning and here it goes. Here's morning. Alright. Now, go ahead and since we got more Jirama, I'm going to go ahead and futz with it. Let's see, we got Annex Room and we got the Barbell for Camacho. Or for Macho, sorry. Now, and you want to prioritize checking the houses every single time. Okay, nothing in there. Annex room, nothing in here. Wait, really? Nothing in here? Oh, nope, nope, nope. I see something. I see something. Get an attack plus one. Alright. Leave. All right, and now we're going to put on uh, put Camacho there. Now, not all the time will the characters be at their house. They'll sometimes be walking around, like the Macho Brothers do. So I'm going to talk to Camacho. Thank you, Toen. Say what happened on the day of the festival, anyway. I remember a light flash from the sky. It was like a certain kind of mania running wild. And the houses disappeared. And after that, I don't remember a thing. Anyway, um... How should I build Naroon? I'd like the house to be somewhere where I don't have to go far for a good workout check! Alright, uh... What will happen when done? Let me tell you something, brother. I'll give you something, but I'll keep it a secret for now. The hint is rock-breaking strength. Tell me how to rebuild your house. Say your prayers, eat your vitamins, drink milk. A fence and a lamp would be nice. We ha had stuff any decent person would have, you know. Alright. So now we'll give him a fence and a lamp. Now, once we complete it, we have this little event bubble. What we want to do is return to the scene of crime. Okay, no items. Go inside, though. Whoa, Toad, you've done it! Thanks to you, our house is back to normal again. <clears throat> Here, this is for you. Keep it. Stonebreaker acquired. Hey, that's mine! Hey, bro, what do you think you're doing? Like I always tell you, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is mine. That's how things between big brothers and little brothers should be, Jack. <coughs> I can't take this anymore, bro. We're gonna settle this with a battle. Oh, really? Ready when you are, dude.
Yeah, okay then. All right, let's take a quick look at our analysis. We have 27 Giorama completed, uh, collected, 29 complete. The complete goes up when you complete a building. So, uh, one last thing. Okay, all right, we already know what they want. So we're going to take their house and we're going to move it. Uh, Macho Brothers want a good workout. Put them next to the Divine Beast Cave. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. That's good enough right there. But what I'd like to do is just give them the, the front door access. And as you can see, by doing that, the request went up by 12. Every village you go to, you want to get this up to 100%. It's not required. Well, at least for Naroon Village, it's required. For the rest of them, it's not really. Uh, talk to Camacho. Should I rebuild? That cave's full of monsters now. I know Dran doesn't like it, but it's really exciting for me, and I always like a good challenge. Whatever. Uh, yeah, it's good. The cave's tough lately, so and fighting with weapons is not the way to go. Only hand-to-hand -hand is true, Bob. All right. get a rock breaker which that's going to help in the long run or at least for the short term we're also going to get an attack put it on there right. and um the last thing we want to do before the end of the episode is visit the mayor's house Here we have a gourd. Gourd is a very special item. It's one of three items you can find in the overworld that you want to find. What you do is um, it increases max value of the thirst meter. So we're going to go ahead and give that to Towin. Maximum value of thirst meter of Towin increased one point. So yes, we now have one more uh, water pip, so it takes a little bit longer for it to decay. Uh, we're also going to go into the mayor's closet. A spiky bug's coming out. Another prickly. Um, aside from all these cheeses and meats, we can talk to the mayor again. He'll refill our pouch. Yeah, that's all that was, was repair powder. All right. So, that's going to do it for this episode of Dark Cloud. In the next episode, we're going to toil away at the Divine Beast Cave. See you guys next time.